Hey guys, thanks for tuning into Simtech channel. This is part two of the previous tutorial on how to design a man's sensing device. Basically a device that can sense the presence of your man's power and take appropriate action when the man's power is no longer present. And that would mean to turn on your backup lamp in case of a power outage. I got the idea to design this device because of a couple of times I had to go through a power outage when I was trying to record a tutorial. So now you need some backup plans to avoid a blackout in case of a power outage. Okay, so what I've done now here is I've imported the schematic or I've redrawn the schematic using Altium Designer which is a CAD schematic PCB design software. As you can see the schematic have now been drawn properly in Altium Designer. Now let me take you through it one more time and so that we can all be on board of what's happening in the schematic here. If you haven't watched the part one tutorial, I suggest you watch part one tutorial so that you understand how we got to this schematic. But it's a very simple schematic. So to begin with, we've got a man's input here. So that basically your live and your neutral input. And your live wire is going into a fuse because this whole circuit will be working on a low amperage. So you don't want a short circuit to be created somewhere and more than one amp of a circuit going through and burning everything. So actually this fuse could be reduced to like a 500 milliamp fuse or even a 200 milliamp fuse for that matter. Okay, then you have this R1, a 33 ohm resistor. Now this resistor was initially not there on the previous tutorial. Now we decided to include it because it's going to be serving as a, a limiting for the inrush current for this D3 Zener diode. Because this capacitor here, as long as, as soon as the AC mains is connected, C1 will try to charge and it will try to pull as much current as possible because it will be flat at that time. And that current will be creating an inrush current that might be damaging to the Zener diode. So you put the 33 ohm resistor here to try to limit that current to uh, an acceptable value. Then we have this MOV here, varistor, which is a 43 volt. So in case of a surge voltage, the voltage will be clamped down to 43 volt. That is also to protect the entire circuit, which is based on a 5 volt regulator here. Then we have our cap dropper, a 220 nano farad capacitor, which I've already explained the cap dropper, okay? And then we've got the two resistor R2 and 3, which will be for the discharging of the capacitor when the mains is disconnected. So remember, this capacitor will be fully charged to the level of 230 volt or 120. So when you disconnect your mains, if the capacitor haven't been discharged through the circuit here, there will be some residual voltage left there. So you want it to be discharged via R2 and 3 so that you avoid shocking someone with it. Okay, so we're done on that part. Then we come on the input of the bridge rectifier. So it's a full wave bridge rectifier with the part number MD6. Now this bridge rectifier will give us a ripple output, okay, of a full wave. Then we're smoothing it with a capacitor of 222 nano uh, microfarad, okay? Now this capacitor can be a 25 volt or a 50 volt capacitor there is no problem because this voltage is already either way clamped at 5 volt with the 5 volt Zener diode. Then we have this resistor R4. R4 is a limiting resistor for the optocoupler LED. Okay? Because we need to bias this LED appropriately so that in turn when the LED is turned on we can then bias the base of this uh, transistor here. All is happening inside the optocoupler part number KB817. Okay. Then after that, so this is all happening if there is a man's presence. That's what's going to happen. You're going to have a 5 volt here, and then the 5 volt is going to induce a current here onto this LED, and that's going to uh, base bias this big BJT. And that will then turn on the Q2. Okay. When Q2 turns on, automatically this relay here 
will switch from this pole here because it's now set up at normally closed okay when q2 is on the relay coil will be energized and it will pull this pole on this normally open and there will be no more power going through like this from the 12 volt all the way to our backup lamp so this is our 12 volt battery connection that is supplying this section of the circuit okay not this section this section here is coming from the bridge only the output of the opto isolator is being supplied from the battery side okay now r6 okay r6 here is the pull down for the base that is to ensure that the transistor is always shut down when the mains is also off okay because there is always something we call a miller capacitance between your base and your collector so when your transistor seemingly is off there is always some leakage current that will be flowing from the collector and that can cause noises into your system so if you pull it down then you are creating the path for that small current to go down to the ground so this is why you have that pull down r6 so this is basically how the circuit work and d2 we already say is your back emf protection when the relay coil latch okay so that is it so now we're going to now move into uh, designing the pcb layout for the circuit so what you do is after you've drawn all your component you come on design if any of any of you is familiar with altium designer this is what you do so you do pcb document update and then it is supposed to take all your pcb uh, your schematic part and then import it into your pcb so when i click on the main sensing pcb then i've got all the component are already here so what is happening here is all these component they are now awaiting to be placed into the pcb i've already drawn the pcb size okay now if i go to 3d viewing you can see i've got all my component ready to be placed into the pcb okay so now i'm going to start placing them block by block why block by block because that will uh, facilitate the routing afterward because you don't want to place like j1 together with j3 because you can see they do not have any a link whatsoever in the routing so which means j1 here must be placed together with f1 r1 because they are grouped together so that's what group uh, component placement means so let's find j1 f1 r1 and place them where is j1 there is j1 so i'm going to pull j1 and i'm going to place it right here okay so we've got j1 place the next thing to do we're going to find a fuse where is a fuse this is the mov fuse fuse f1 fuse there it is f1 fuse so we're placing the f1 fuse here because remember the power is going to go through our connector and through the fuse before it it goes into the cap dropper uh, circuitry here okay so now the next thing is to place our r1 okay so we place r1 there is r1 so this is the uh, the in rush current limiting resistor then we can then place this capacitor here as you can see this capacitor here is also connecting with r1 they've got like uh, something going on like that okay then we can then place the two resistor the two cap dropper resistor that is r2 and r3 okay for the discharge so i grab r2 and i grab r3 we can place it like that now let's just play with space here we can place r2 there and r3 like that the way we do that is because this one here is a one net so we just want that one net to be connected and this point here is just the holes for the mounting all of these guys here are holes for mounting okay then the next thing here is to place the rv1 that is the mov rv1 mov we, we just grab him again 
and then we place him there okay so rv1 is placed the cap dropper resistors are placed everything is placed okay just neatly like that then we can then move on from there we can get our bridge and then get the capacitor and so forth so let's first get the bridge we can get the bridge also just notice how i'm placing everything accordingly so that they can be rooted properly also because the neutral is coming to here and then the live one because that is now on the output of this cap dropper here and that's going into there on that side so now i can place now my capacitor c2 and c2 can be placed like that now it's not interfering because d1 here is placed on the bottom side and c2 is placed on the top side we can view it with a 3d as you can see like that there it is so this is our d1 the bridge rectifier and then the capacitor is right on top of it so this is how it shows on the layout here okay now the next thing to place here is we can place a zener diode d3 and r4 let's get a zener diode d3 okay there is d3 notice how i'm placing the 5 volt point okay that is your cathode of your zener we're placing it right next to the capacitor positive side there and then we've got the ground now remember this ground here we can then just pass it like that so always maintain the clearances so this is how you do routing maintain clearances with uh, nets that got high potential versus nets that got low potential for instance this ground here is a low potential compared to the live wire here so you must make sure there is a, a good gap between them so if i take a measurement quickly here you can see i've got four millimeter from that uh, live potential to the ground level which is quite huge because normally the requirement is somewhere around two millimeters so i'm double that so i'm safe okay so now we can place what the resistor here and the optocoupler u2 let's first grab the optocoupler okay uh, you can see that everything is aligning perfectly here so we place the optocoupler there that's the the input of the optocoupler then we've got the resistor also need to be connected here that is r4 let's grab r4 there is r4 r4 right there okay now you can see that there is no more net that is crossing from this side here this section of the circuit there's nothing crossing this section of the circuit going into that side so this is why this is isolated it's an isolated mains voltage detector so we can then place this yellow mark here because this yellow mark here means there is no electrical connection between these two point nothing between these two sides and this side so we can actually even cut the board here just leave a thin connection there uh the circuit will still going to work because they work independently from one another although they require a bias from this side okay now what's the next thing to do we are now on this side here so this is where we need our transistor q2 and the relay to be placed so let's first bring the relay in okay now you can see the connection of the relay of the 12 volt is going into the collector of the optocoupler so we can just place it like that it should be fine okay let's just look at it how it look like okay the optocoupler is placed at the bottom there it is so we basically just have the optocoupler in between the relays placed from the bottom okay then okay let's maybe just extend our pcb because this relay here is standing quite very 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 close to the edges of the pcb so if we can just click on the pcb outline then we can just pull the pcb outline slightly like that and then what you do is you go on pcb outline there then shift s then you select the whole pcb outline then you hit the shortcut key dsd and then your pcb is now extended so now we've got some 
room to play here. The relay is now sitting fully inside the PCB. Okay, so now the next thing to do here is to bring the rest of the component. So that would mainly be, let's first bring the transistor here because it's also connected on the side. Okay, then we have that connection done. Then we can bring in the diode. That is the free wheel diode or the back EMF diode, D2. D2, we bring in D2. Like that, is that connection perfect? Yes, let's put him a little bit up there. And then we have this connection is going to where? It's going to R5, okay? There is R5, like that. Okay, R5. Now R5 is also connected to R6, I believe. Yes, there is a point where there to the base of that Q2. Where is the base of Q2? There is a base of Q2. So that is one net. So which means we can connect R6 in a way that can make sense. So if we put R6 like that, then what should happen here is this net is the same. Now let's rather now let's place it this way okay no not not on top because they must not be on top they should be this way if we look at the 3d view let's just go there at the bottom there you can see there is r5 and there is r6 so they should not be on top of each other so this one can actually just come a bit close there on the outline of the component okay so now the next component to place here is actually just a connector so j3 which is the the output yes that's a backup lamp output so that is when when the relay when there is no mains there is a 12 volt going on to j3 so our lamp will be on when there is no no mains so this is where we put our j3 right there okay okay let's just put him a little bit further there cool then we can take j2 which is the input of the battery okay and j2 can just be placed here like that that's j2 now we've got the dummy symbol of the battery here so that is bat the one that's referenced on the schematic as bat now this one can may or may not be there it does not matter because the battery connection is already coming into j2 here but uh, just for the purpose of illustration, we can put it here. Okay. It's going to be exactly the same connections. So if we look at it, there it is. Let's just flip this board like that. Okay. So there it is. So this is J2. Okay. All right. So this is J2. That's the input of the battery and that's the output to the backup lamp. And this is our mains input. There is our fuse. That's a big capacitor, the cap dropper. And that's our capacitor that is in the diode. And this one here is the metal oxide the varista for the protection of the whole circuit. Okay, so there we have everything is set and done here. Now, guess what the next thing to do here is basically to complete the routing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide certain things here so that i can do the routing easily so i'm gonna hide the top overlay okay and i'm gonna also hide the bottom overlay that way i only have the circuit clear so that i can see where my routing is going now at this point here you can either do auto routing so that basically mean you just hit auto routing and the thing is just going to connect the net without you guiding the net but if you want your net to go exactly your routing to go how you want them so you're going to do a manual routing so that's what i'm going to do i will select on the bottom layer because that's where the components are mostly placed the the the, the this smt component so i will route from the bottom layer there then i connect the live wire into this connector then i take this side here now this is one net as you can see let's maybe just move this one a little bit there okay that's one net and then we've got the connection like that and this connection now let's just increase that thickness make it 0 0.7 okay the thickness of the track 
then we've got these connections to the mov like that and then you have this connection also to the mov make it also 0 0.7 millimeter then you've got a live wire it can either decide to go there or it can go there so you can choose which one is the better routing so i prefer to go there then maybe let's just move this resistor there so that we can have a, a good uh, connection like that then the neutral wire is going into this point from the bridge then you've got now the output of the bridge so you have this ground connection like that and then you've got the 5 volt okay now this ground here actually should also be just be increased in size let's make it also 0 0.7 it doesn't matter really much just because it's a ground wire that is a reference bringing all the return current so let's just make it slightly bigger okay then we need to draw from this point here now i would like to now just go underneath here okay like that now notice how i went underneath the bridge rectifier but i'm staying clear from the neutral and live wire there because i don't want to be too close there risking a short circuit that would blow the whole thing off so i've got like 2.6 millimeter which is big enough of a clearance so i leave that like that then i come to this point here complete this connection let's just increase this thickness also okay even this this track thickness must also be increased but we can do it later now let's connect the 5 volt routing Five volt routing. Five volt routing is done, and then we come to the side. Okay. Now we've completed all our connections from that mains capacitor dropper side. Now we're coming to the low voltage side here. Okay. Then we join also the collector here and that connection is the same okay we've got uh, our free wheel diode the back emf protection diode that's connecting like that okay so now to complete our routing we just need to finish up on this side here completing the routing okay that's net and then the 12 volt net okay then we have this net also going that way okay what more we need to connect okay the input of the battery that one and this net you can see how easy it is to do your routing once once everything is done once you get your component placement perfectly the rest become really just uh, a, a game you are playing here because the component have been placed perfectly so now your routing is just going to be much easier okay all right now let's just bring this somewhere there in the mirror because we don't want to be creating potential for short okay so we've got this second ground here that need to be routed okay so this point can travel like that now this this is a bit too thick let's reduce the thickness okay tab and then let's just make it 0.5 there because it's going underneath that uh, 1206 resistor like that so i can move this resistor slightly like that so that that point can just be there okay now we only have a few connections left that is this two point here that's need to be connected and this point that's going all the way into our transistor base there okay that point now you've got these connections still need to be connected okay so what is happening here this point this point need to go there so we need to make a way here 
it's either we take this guy let's take this guy pass him here okay if we take that guy pass him there then this guy here make him six and then he can pass there like that now what will happen here is we realize that this track here is maybe a little bit too tight okay it may be a little bit too tight here so which means we can extend the pcb just slightly just slightly because we don't want to be routing things on the board's edge that is really oops oops just back 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 space and then you are back into the normal to the safe zone okay something like that okay then you have this connection also that need to go from this point here into this point there and that's it now let's just uh, uh, readjust the pcb size okay now notice that there is room for improvement there is some spacing i can make this pcb much smaller if i want to but uh, because it's just a prototype we are design testing here so we can go for what we have here right now if we want to make it much smaller obviously you can change some component and check the component rating make them very small and what what reduce the size of the component but as you can see this is a complete pcb this is a complete pcb for this men's sensing device okay so now the only thing left now to do here is to uh, get the gerbers generate the gerbers for this pcb do all the final details that you need to do all the um, the designators the um, yeah all your designators and top overlays and everything uh, your naming of your component and then you can generate the gerbers file and uh, send it to glc then they can design you uh, generate you or manufacture you a pcb for your project okay but then what i'm going to do is i'm not going to do a glc uh for now i'm going to etch this pcb i'm going to do pcb etching so that will be a very quick prototype we're going to etch it on an fr4 pcb so that we can have it tested right away we start waiting for glc so you must stay tuned for part two part three rather of this tutorial where i'm going to etch this pcb and uh and then have it tested for the purpose of detecting the presence of the men's and switching on our backup lighting okay thanks for watching please if you like this tutorial don't forget to subscribe to simple channel and give it a thumbs up until next time stay tuned cheers